Hey, what's going on beautiful jellyfish? It's Tracy. Thanks so much for hanging out. And today I'm going to be doing a video on my updated Tassiger deck tech. The last time I filmed one of these was in 2018 in August. So it's coming up on two years. And I thought that I would do an updated version of this. I will be listing my deck in the down bar below along with the other three versions of this deck tech I have. It is one of my oldest EDH decks. I've had it since 2015. And it is insanely fun. Um, this deck, I've definitely given this deck to people who are like, hey, I want to play a different deck or I don't have an EDH deck and I'll give this to people. I'm like, it's Graver Recursion. It's super fun. And like every person I give this deck to has just thought that this is so in insanely fun. Um, I would say this is definitely one of my most consistent decks along with one of my most powerful. And um, I just want to throw this out there that everyone's version of powerful and is very, very different. So my seven might look different from your seven. Um, I'm not saying this is a seven. I don't actually really know, to be honest, what I would put this and I don't know if it quite matters. But um, yeah, this deck is themed around Graveyard Recursion, and it is themed around um, very much control. There's a lot of control cards, but it's really just truly fun. You get Tasker out, you get your stuff back, and you'll kind of see what the deck kind of does. But I have two um, versions of Tassiger. I have my timestamped promo, and for anyone who's been keeping up with me for a while, you know that I love foils, but particularly I like timestamped foils. Um, if there's a timestamp in a regular pack foil, I will always take the timestamp. Don't really know why. And then this, my good friend Koji got altered for me, which is Tassiger with a bunch of bananas, and I love this more than anything ever in existence. So uh, let's just hop into it. Um, the deck runs, we're going to start with lands. That's kind of what I always start with. And I tend to not um, go through those, you know, and spend a lot of time on them. But I have six islands. Yeah, these are these are my favorite. I need to get them all to be that. I just haven't changed these. I do really like these two these Magic Fest ones. Um, I got those when I was in, um, I was about to say Vegas. No, and I got those when I was in... What event did I recently go to? Uh, Magic Fest Austin. I have run five swamps. And I run the most forests. I run eight. That's it for basics. Um, I do run quite a bit of basics because I have a lot of graveyard fetching. Uh, I have a lot of fetching for those. The first land I run is Alchemist Refuge because with this you have Build Your Own Prophet of Crufix with this and Seedborn Muse, which we'll talk about when we get to Creatures. I love Alchemist Refuge. I have been playing with this card for a really, really long time, and I definitely recommend it. The next card I run is Bad River. I do really enjoy this because it is um, a fetchable land. Oh, I actually should say, um, and while we're on the topic of lands, I don't have all of the fetch lands in this deck. I think I just have like one. I have Polluted Delta. Um, it is on my list to acquire the other ones, and I hopefully will be getting those soon because this deck really functions very well having those fetch lands to get the colors I need, but more specifically to have cards in my graveyard to delve away. Bad River is a really good card. I really enjoy it. Um, the next card I run is Bajooka Bog. I run this card in all my black decks. Also, Howard Lion Signature is one of my favorites of all time. I just think it's stunning. I run Breeding Pool, and I am going to actually pull out the other Shocklands just because I run them all, and I, yeah, not a whole lot to say there. I run Command Tower. I get a lot of comments about this card in particular because this altar is incredibly stunning. Um, this is from, it says www.alteredprints.com, Dangel Fyrick. I'm not 100% sure how to say that, but, um, I got this from one of my friends in a trade and it's like, honestly, one of the coolest cards I own. I then run, um, Evolving Wilds along with Terramorphic Expanse. This is my favorite Evolving Wilds art, actually the Dark Ascension one. I just think it's so dark and cool. I don't know. I just really enjoy it. I run Fields of Ruin. I really like this card a lot It because it it um, destroys something and then you along with everyone else. It's a very political card, which I really enjoy. I run Ghost Quarter. Same thing, land destruction, um, except this is just one thing. And it is target land, so you can destroy a basic with this if necessary. Myriad Landscape is one of my favorite lands. I really enjoy this a lot. Um, I particularly like it in three, in one, two, and three color decks. I because you have to get them of the same type. So if you get like islands, you have to get two islands. But nonetheless, I do really enjoy this card. The primary color, I don't really know. I think it goes green, then black, then green, then black, then blue. Yeah, is how it works. Um, I run Opulent Palace. Polluted Delta, like I mentioned earlier, my only um, 
fe I have fetchable lands, but like my only fetchable land like this. Rogue's Passage, because this combines with one of my win conditions, which is Kessig Cage Breakers, which we'll talk about. And the last land I have is Sunken Hollow. Really enjoy this. I do want to get the expedition of this, though. This one is very stunning. Those are for my lands. I run 35. 35 is my sweet spot. I've been running 35 for way too long. It's just kind of, you know, my number. Uh, let's hop into Planeswalkers. I only run two. The first one I run is Soren Markov. This is one of the win conditions. Minusing Soren, um, you have ways of getting him back, um, so you can do it to multiple people. Uh, yeah, I very, very rarely use the minus seven. I don't think I've ever honestly minus seven. It's always the minus three that I do. So really good card. And the um, only other Planeswalker I run is Ugin, the Spirit Dragon. I run this card because I like having um, things exiled and yeah, I like removal. It's my thing. Uh, let's talk about enchantments. I only run four. The first one I run is at the first one I the first one I run, that is so hard to say, is Animate Dead. Really enjoy this card. Super great graveyard recursion. It's really good if you, for two mana, you can get back one of your really, really um, expensive guys, which is really awesome. I really enjoy this card. I've been playing with it for a long time, and it's not very expensive, which is awesome. The next card I run is Deadbridge Chant. I love this card. I think this card is very underrated and underplayed. Um, it is a lot of mana. It's six mana, but you mill 10 cards, and honestly, even if someone destroys it before you get the second ability off, which you get any creature back to your battlefield, or you get it back to your hand if it's not a creature, which is amazing. Like, I also think too, and one thing I should say about this deck, is that there's no bad targets to get back. And I think like that's something important if you are going to build Tassiger, is don't build a deck where there's bad targets to get back in your, in your deck. Like, every card in here is very intentional, it's very specific. There are duds, and like, I'll talk about times that cards might not be the best but honestly like everything in here is very much like if, if you're activating Tassiger or you have like this and you get something back you're always going to be happy someone's like oh I'll give you back like you know your mana dork you're like great I'll fetch another land like you don't care and I think that's a really important thing that I would note about building this deck if you are going to build it I also run Imprisoned in the Moon. This is a really, really wonderful card. It deals with a lot of, uh, like, indestructible and things like that, getting around it and then just giving them a land. It's really hilarious. And then I run Phyrexian Reclamation. I love this card. One of my friends gives me a lot of flack for this card, but it is extremely strong when you can pay two life to get any creature back to your hand. You honestly don't care that you have to pay the life and you just get your stuff back. It's incredibly good and it only costs one mana. Like this card is awesome. I love it. All right, let's go into talking about artifacts next. I run, let's see, seven artifacts. The first one I run is Birthing Pod. Yeah, there's really not a whole lot to say. I feel like a lot of people know what the impact of having a birthing pod is I actually haven't drawn this card recently which is really interesting it's really good there's so many good targets you don't care about paying the life and you also don't care about having something go to the graveyard you can always get it back later so great card I then have chromatic lancer and not a whole lot to say there also this is one of my newest shinies and it was really pretty um, and then I run Perilous Vault. This is my favorite artifact for those who do not know. I love this card. I love being able to exile things. It's a lot of mana to exile things, but honestly, I don't care. This and Ugin are my only... No, I have other exile things, but these are my mass exile things. I oh, I run this card in like every deck. I love it. I then run Skull Clamp. There are many, many, many targets with Skull Clamp. My favorite thing to probably do is to have this on a Solemn Simulacrum, equip it, and then when it dies, you draw three cards. It is like the best thing ever. Such a good card. Sol Ring. I run Swiftfoot Boots. Of course, I actually don't have Greaves in this deck. I'm not 100% sure as to why I don't have Greaves, but Swiftfoot Boots is like pseudo the same thing. It just costs one mana. You ramp a lot in this deck, so it doesn't matter. And then the last artifact I run is Videl Videlkin Ori. This is probably like my second favorite artifact. I only actually own two. They're pretty pricey. I do need to get my hands on more of them, but... Uh, nonetheless, still a great card. Having Flash is incredibly powerful. And th yeah, this with Alchemist Refuge or Seedborn Muse is a Prophet of Crufix, which is real good. Let's talk about Instance. The first one I run is Blue Sun Zenith. Once you cast this card for, I don't know, like seven beyond, 
you're probably getting everything you need and you're probably winning. Oh, I also should say this. Sorry, I keep forgetting things. I don't run any win, um, um, what's it called? Instant win conditions in this deck. I don't run any combos or anything. I actually did run the combo, the Deadeye Navigator, and, uh, I'm forgetting the other card, um, Paragon Drake. I used to run that combo. I don't anymore. It just wasn't fun to me, and I could tutor it at any time and just win all the time, and it just didn't seem fun to me, so I didn't do it. So, I took it out. Anyways, great card. Drawing cards. And then I also really like with this card that you shuffle it back into the library. I run Brainstorm. Cyclonic Rift. Super important. Dig Through Time. Yeah, God, love this card so much. And the last instant I run is Reality Shift. One of my personal favorites. I really like exiling things because then I know I don't have to mess with it and I know it's gone forever. So I really enjoy that. This is a great, great, great card and they get a manifest and guess what? You don't care because the manifest is significantly wor or significantly better than what you just exiled. <laughs> great card. All right, let's chat now about sorceries. I run 14. The first one I run is Buried Alive. Also, can we talk about this card for a second? I got this, um, uh, what set is this? Is this Temp? I don't know what the set is. But anyways, I bought this card when it was like 2 or $3 foil, and now it's like $20 foil, which is like insane. I love the thing. I really love these borders too, the, the like old school borders. Ugh. And like, what is what is this thing called? This shooting star? I don't know. That's what I call it. Anyways, Barry Love is a great card. You put three things into your graver, and you can always get them back. Great, great addition in this deck. I run Damnation. Of course I run this card. Like, of course. Great card. Demonic Tutor. I really enjoy this. I'm also going to talk about Diabolic Intent as well. I think Diabolic Intent a lot of people were sleeping on for a while because this card was insanely cheap and now it is much more expensive. Uh, Demonic Tutor is just a given. Uh, it's definitely one of those cards that I think are just totally worth the money. And it's great. And then Diabolic Intent's good. You sack a creature, which can actually work out in your favor, and then you can tutor, and you don't reveal with both of these, which I really enjoy. Vampiric Tutor is on my wish list. That's a card that I do want to get. Um, I have Disentomb. I've talked about this card in my EDH cards under a dollar. This is an amazing card. You can also get the foil under a dollar, too, and this is a stunning foil, and it's like 30 cents. It is incredible. This is a great card. It is only creature, but honestly, you run really great creatures that I don't think that matters. I really enjoy it. Fade into Antiquity. Again, I really like exiling things. This is a card I run in all of my green decks. It exiles an enchantment or an artifact. It's a great card. In Garrick's Wake, this is kind of my pet card, I would say. I run this in, like, all my black decks. It is, like, 7,000 million mana. But again, you mana accelerate pretty well, and ideally, you will cast this, and then you will probably win the next turn, unless you're in very deep, like, you need to get rid of the board or you're just gonna die kind of thing. But um, very often I cast this, and then I just kill everyone. It's great. I have Ponder. Really enjoy this card. And then pretty much along the same line, I run Preordain. Um... Yeah, good cards. I have Reanimate. This is a great card. It's one mana to get anything back. You do lose life equal to its CMC, but honestly, you really don't care. I feel like I have a lot of um, lose life in this deck, but honestly, like you don't care. And I don't really have a lot of gain life, which is really interesting. I actually took out my Blood Artist. Um, I don't really know why, but I don't really have a lot of ways to gain life, but I honestly don't really know if it matters fully. I, I don't really end up killing myself very often. It just, it's not really something that happens a lot. The next card I have is Regrowth. I really enjoy this card. It is any card and it goes back to your hand for only two mana. It's under a dollar. The foil I think is like two dollars. It's a great card. Temporal Trespass is one of my favorites. I really enjoy this because of the delve aspect. You do end up delving away cards like lands for the most part because you do have those fetchable lands and that's pretty much what you delve you're not going to delve creatures because of Kessig cage breakers that's again one of the main win conditions but I do really enjoy this card the next card I have is Traverse the Uvenwald, a really solid tutor. I enjoy it a lot. Um, you do get a basic if you don't have Delirium, but let's be real here, you're probably going to have Delirium, and then if not, you tutor, you tutor for a uh, creature, and it is only one mana. I really like this. And the last card um, I have for sorceries is Treasure Cruise, because I love drawing magic cards. All right, let's talk about the most fun, the creatures. I have 32 creatures in this deck. The first creature I run is Acidic Slime. I love this card. 
it's death touch you just turn artifact and enchantment or land more often than not i picked artifact or enchantment but if someone has a really threatening land i will destroy that i'm not a huge fan of land destruction i but i'll do it i i don't like continuous land destruction if that makes sense but i will do it if there's like one land in particular that's a huge problem love this card this is one of the few flex slots in the deck. I just got this card. I'm testing it out. I don't really know how well it works. Alkalite of Affliction, such a cool name. ADTB is you put two cards into your library from your graveyard, and then you may return a permanent from your graveyard to your hand. This card seems really strong. It is permanent, so you can't get back your instants and sorceries, but you can get back your artifacts, and you can get back your creatures. And then you're left with the 2-3 body. It seems pretty good to me. I don't know if it's great. I don't know if it's amazing. I don't know if it's bad. I, I think it's good. I don't know if it's great so um we'll kind of see how that works the next card i run is archaeomancer i haven't run this card like I, I this is a new addition to the deck but i realized that i have really good targets for this card so i decided to put it in there good card I run Baleful Strix. Of course, any deck that's running these colors totally needs this. You draw a card and then you're just left with a really nice flying death touch block. So good. Bane of Progress. Of course, this card's amazing. My only thing is that this card does not come in foil, so I really hope it gets printed in something where we can have a foil one. Great card. Destroying everything and then it gets bigger and then it's a huge body. Great. The next card is Coiling Oracle. I love this card so much. You get so much value off of it. It basically says you get a land to the battlefield, not tapped, or you draw a card. And you're left with a 1-1. One -one. Clips with Skull Clamp, all, great blocker, all around amazing card. Oh, I lied. I do have a life gain card in this deck, and that is Courser of Crufix. I love Courser. I've been playing with this card for years, and honestly, I just... I. I love this card. It's just such a good, well-rounded card. I truly hold this back on defense. It's actually a really nice defense blocker. It has four toughness, which is really good, and you gain life, and you get to look at the top card of your library. Like, it's, it's great. Okay, the next card is Deathbringer Region. I do enjoy this card. It is a seven mana board wipe. There's going to be four, five or more creatures. Like, let's be completely honest. And then you blow them all up and you're left with a five, six flyer. It's really good. Okay, we have my, my favorite morph, my only morph that I ever run in anything, which is Den Protector. Every single time I play a morph, everyone knows it's a Den Protector. You don't care. You get something back, which is really good. I really like this card. It's kind of a lot of mana to, you morph it, so it's five mana total, but what I like is that you can spread the mana out. Like, no one is gonna kill your morph. Like, I, I, no one is gonna, like, you, you play this face down and no one's gonna be like, kill your morph, unless you're playing, like, a morph deck. But, like, no one's gonna target this, they know it's a dent protector, like, so then they won't, and then I, it's, like, next turn I get to pay two mana for it. So, yes, yeah, kind of a lot of mana, but I usually spread it out, unless I, like, sometimes I do go like this and then immediately flip it, um, but I do get something back, and then it becomes a three, two. So, good card. Elvish Visionary, not a whole lot to say, I just like drawing cards. I have Frilled Mystic, and I'm also going to talk about Mystic Snake at the same time because they are the same thing. The only difference is this is a 3-2, this is a 2-2, and this is paid with uh, Colorless, and this is paid with full uh, green and blue mana. I really enjoy these. I, I honestly run both because they just are so good. I really like the counter aspect. I don't run counter spells, if you've noticed. I don't quite know like what the rationale behind that was I just don't want to play a lot of counter magic what I've actually really found is two is enough you can have them use them block with them they die and then you can get them back so it tends not to be a problem I don't really want to run a ton of counter spells it's just not really my jam I run very few counter spells when I do play blue Eternal Witness, and I'm going to talk about Green Mortimer Acid together because they do the same thing. Um, Green Mortimer Acid just says that when it dies, you exile it and you get something back again. So it's like a double Eternal Witness, which is incredibly good. Love Ewit. Um, love Green Warden. Been running with these cards, been playing these cards for a while, and they're both amazing. Actually, if you're interested, Ewit foils, foils are really cheap right now. They're under $10. I run Hydroid Crisis. Immediately as I saw this card, I was like, I need it. And then Paul got this for me for, I think, my birthday last year. And I love this card. I really truly don't find myself drawing it enough, which is a bummer. This is just a good, like, late game card. This is such a good mid-range card. Like, I, I honestly think it's so good. You gain life, you draw cards, you got Fine, you got Trample. It's a great blocker, a great 
swinger. Like, overall, this card is amazing. I, I love it. I really hope I draw this card more. I've been talking about this card all video, and that is Kese Cage Breakers. This is one of the main win conditions in the deck. There's a lot of people who don't think this card is good, and I'm here to tell you that you're wrong. This card is amazing. What I love about Kese Cage Breakers is that you pretty much equip Slowfoot Boots to it and Rogue's Passage. You make this unblockable, and then you swing, and you can have, like, just think about it like this. If I had only this, and I had every creature in my graveyard, I would have a maximum of 31 creatures in my graveyard. That's probably not going to happen. That'd be really rad if it happens, but honestly, I have milled a lot, and there's been a lot of stuff in my graveyard, but you think about it. You could have anywhere from 1 to 31 creatures in your graveyard, with this on board and 31 times 2 is 62 dam 62 uh damage right from wolves if i'm mathing that correct um yeah this card's great and what i like about it too is those wolves do not go away they stay and then it triggers again when you attack and it is when you attack so even if it dies because honestly someone is going to kill this if it doesn't have a swift boots on it or someone's gonna block it or whatever and they're gonna kill it which is fine because you still get the wolves i've killed way too many people with this card it's amazing i love it the next card i have is mole drifter great card. I very rarely hard cast this card. I pretty much always evoke it for two mana to draw two cards, and it's a creature, which is great with Kessig. So I love this card. The next card I have is Oracle of Moldaya. I love Oracle of Moldaya. The card advantage that you get with this is just so incredibly strong. Yeah, you reveal your cards, which can sometimes be annoying because then people know like what's going on in your hand. They're like, oh, you have counter magic or oh, you have a removal spell or whatever. But like, to be honest, like anyone who knows me knows I probably have those cards in my hand anyway. So like they always know I have some sort of removal card in my hand. So it's like, this is not very shocking, but I do really enjoy this card. Getting the advantage of playing two lands a turn is incredibly powerful. Razaketh. I think a lot of people slept on this card. This card was incredibly cheap, and then this card really spiked because people were realizing how dumb this card is. It says you pay two life, and you sack anything, and you demonic tutor. Like, what? This is so good. You cannot sack itself, so that's one downside, I would say, of this card, is that if someone does blow up the board, you can't sack this in response. I love that you don't have to tap it, so you can do this as many times as you have creatures. It's a flying trick it's an 8-8. Like, this card is so good. Oh my god, I love it. I have Reclamation Sage. Not a whole lot to say. ETBs destroy Artifact or Enchantment. Great card. Rune Scar Demon. One of my favorites. I love this tutor. You tutor for anything. You don't have to reveal it. And you're left with a 6-6 six, six Flyer for 7 mana. Great card. Sakura Tribalder not really a whole lot to say there. You sack it. Great. You love that. It goes to your graveyard and you tutor for a basic. The next card I run is Seder Wayfinder. This card I've been running for so long. I think this has been in like my first ever deck tech. To be honest, I really just enjoy this card a lot. I love that you mill four cards. It's one of actually the very few mill cards I have in this deck. You'd actually be surprised. Tassiger mills, Deadbridge Chant mills, this mills. I think that's it, actually, unless I'm missing something. But you don't really care. You you tend to get creatures destroyed or permanents destroyed, or you just mill with Tassiger. Like, it doesn't really matter. But anyways, I love Seder Wayfinder. You do get a land back, which is great. And then you'll put the 1-1. One -1. Great fodder for... Um, What's that card? Skull Clamp. Seedborn Muse. Yeah, absolutely. Love Seedborn Muse. Would recommend this card in every single green deck. You untap all permanents. This is really good to do with Tassiger because if you don't have an Alchemist Refuge and you don't have a Dalkin Ori, you can just have this card and then have Tassiger and just activate it. So good. Sheldred. Of course I'm running this card. I really enjoy Sheldred. I've been playing with this card for a really long time and... I love it. If you get creatures back, they sack things. Overall, amazing card. Shriek Maw. I really enjoy this. I very rarely hard cast this card. Very similarly to, what's the card? Moldrifter. Um, I, you know, it's got fear, which can absolutely be relevant. It's a 3-2 if you choose to hard cast it, or for two mana, you can destroy something, and it's another creature in your graveyard for Kessie Gage Breakers. Great card. Next, I have Sidisi Undead v Visor, Visor, whatever. This card's amazing. I love it. You exploit. You do not care. Whatever. And then you're left with the Death Touch 4-6, and you get to tutor, and you don't reveal it. <laughs> it's 
card's amazing. It does so many things. Almost done, y'all. I next have Solemn Simulacrum, i.e. Sad Robot. I really, like, there's not a whole lot to say there. This card's great. It gets you bait lands, and it draws you cards. I have Your Friend and Mine, Spore Frog. I really enjoy Spore Frog. I didn't run this card, actually, for a while, and I decided, I was like, I kind of should just as, like, another, like, as another thing to do to prevent combat damage, then you can just get this card back and, like, really good and then you can just like always prevent combat damage which makes it really hard for your stuff to get through there's they're their stuff to get through I should say I have wood elves and I'm actually going to talk about all three of these cards in conjunction because they all do very much the same thing I have wood elves Yavi Maya Dryad and Yavi Maya Granger wood elves gets a forest it does not come into the battlefield tapped which I really enjoy and it does not say basic I love wood elves for that reason because you can get anything your shock lands which is really good and I do often get that with wood elves Yavi Maya Dryad is good you get a forest it does come into the play tapped but it has a 2-1 and it's got forest walk which I really like and yes that actually can be relevant and it has been and it does say target player's control, so you can be political with this card, and you can give someone a forest if you want to be nice. And you're like, oh, if I give you a forest, like, will you promise to kill that creature or something like that? And then Yavi Maya Granger, I really enjoy. Not a lot of people know about this card. It does have echo, and you honestly don't care. I very rarely pay for the echo cost, unless I'm in, like, a dire situation where I need a blocker. But more often than not, I have this card. I, I get my um, basic land, put it into play tapped, and then it echoes, and then it goes away. Again, more fodder for Kessig. So guys, that is everything for my Tassiger EDH updated deck tech for 2020. I know that deck techs are very popular. A lot of people really, really enjoy them. Um, myself included. I think they're really fun videos to film. And it's just really interesting to see someone else's take on um, a pile of cards. So um, also, I guess the last thing, if you have stayed till the end, I really appreciate it. But one thing I guess I would say too is uh, this to me seems like a pretty challenging deck to build budget. I might build a budget challenge and kind of see what I can do with this deck. Uh, keep in mind though that this deck has a very large percentage of foils. There's very few cards in this deck that are not foil, as I'm sure you've noticed. I think there's like... I think there's like 70 foils in this deck and then I think like 30 are unfoiled or something like that. It's very, very few at this point. So that's just something to keep in mind if you are interested in this deck and you're like, why is this deck so expensive on tapped out? It's because just truly a lot of these are foils and they are more expensive. But um, anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like it if you did. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye.